Hey everyone, Will here and welcome to the Billionaires Book Club where I read and review books written by billionaires. Today we're going to be talking about Peter Thiel's new book, Zero to One. It is very, very popular in certain circles and it's selling like hotcakes. And I think it's been out for about a year now, but it is very popular. He is a tech startup billionaire investor and he's invested in a lot of the big companies including Facebook, and Uber, I think. <clears throat> and he co-founded PayPal. So in this video, what I will be doing is reviewing the book, telling you whether it's worth buying, whether you can actually gain any knowledge that might help you accumulate wealth, achieve success in your life, help you in your business, whatever else it is. And just giving you the big points about this book and so forth. Before I get started though, I'm just very excited because I have already read quite a few books by billionaires and I am just so shocked how many there are out there. I mean, there's lots and lots and I don't think anyone's done anything like this before, but I've already started reading a few and I finished a few already and some help, others not so much. It really depends on what you're looking for and others are just like, you know, very niche topics in their industry and some are not even, you know, talking about creating wealth at all. Uh, but this book, Peter Thiel's Zero to One, I think it's worth the read. I think, you know, if you're in the field of business, it is definitely worth the read, especially the tech business. So this is a very interesting book. It is a very quick read and I listened to it on audiobook. It was a very fast read, uh, maybe four or five hours and I'm done. And I just don't understand it. You know, I know some people who are part of certain businesses and they've only read like half the book. And it's like, why? Why would you do that to yourself? Like finish the book, get all the juice out of it. And this is a book where I really think that as anyone in the tech industry, you have to print this book out, carry it around and reference it. Because you can't, there's no way, unless you have photographic memory, you can retain all of the information in this book. You have to keep referencing it and making sure that it's working for you. And it's not even a thick book at all, so it shouldn't be a huge problem. So the first big thing I want to talk about is the fact that I really do think that this book is mainly suited for people in the tech industry. It can be useful for business people in general, so I do think that anyone in the field of business should read this book, but you have to read it with a grain of salt because some of the stuff being said applies to business in general, which is advice you should take and advice that you should use. And then some of it, which again, it takes a discerning eye, but not to the extent where you have to be some type of code decipherer. But some of it is definitely specific to the tech industry and that advice would not hold true in other industries based off what I've read and based off other things. You know, some of that stuff, it just doesn't fly. It's just specific to how the industry works, how it moves, how fast it changes, the software, all these different things. I mean, you can imagine how specific those types of things are. You know, I really think you should, I really do think that this book is worth reading. I would give it a 4.35 out of five stars. And as far as building wealth, this book is helpful for anyone who is, I mean, it did impart a lot of business wealth. I mean, this book definitely imparted a good deal of business knowledge. Some of it is more on the... Some of it is more so on the elementary level. Other parts may be more useful to you. I don't know. <laughs> but I just thought that this book was very easy to understand. There was nothing in it that was so complicated that it was just like in a different language or so dense that didn't make sense. For me, this book wasn't dry at all. I mean, it had a lot of examples, a lot of different case studies from tech companies, solar companies, and so forth. There were certain points I didn't agree with. He did make some broad overarching claims that I just felt were just too much.
there's some things he said about, well, this is exactly why this entire industry failed. I mean, that's that's huge, just saying that it was just this one thing. Other parts of the book you can't deny are helpful to at least consider when you're running a business or you're part of a business. One thing he talks about is this concept of zero to one, which is the title of the book. It's this idea about how you as a business have to be an order of magnitude better than your competition. Tenfold, 10x better. And the reason being is because if you're just you know marginally better or a little bit better, then there's really no reason for all these customers to switch from your competitors to you. I mean, they already have customer loyalty. They already have all this other stuff. So you coming in with something slightly better and so forth, it's really not going to change the game. You really need something that sticks out and is unique from the crowd. I think that was one of his central messages in this book, this whole idea of how things, this whole idea of how you have to have these specific things this whole idea about how you have to stick out from the crowd. This whole idea that you had to have this order of magnitude greater in. This whole idea that you have to have this one order of magnitude greater product to revolutionize that industry or just stick out from your competition to a point where they cannot deny that your product is better or your service is better and then that they go to you. You know, I cannot you know, I cannot summarize and give you all the specific things in this book that were useful. It's just it's just too big a book with too many pieces. It's just too big a book and too many pieces of information for me to do that. There were some points that I did like as well. Two, one was the fact that. One was the fact that this business, <clears throat> one was the fact that first mover advantage isn't always the best thing to have. Sometimes what you should have is some type of, what you want to have is some level of foundation where you have a competitive advantage that other people cannot easily copy or overtake. Then there's that point about how a team and a partnership is very, very important and how and how the founders and the relationship between the partners are so important. He gives an example about how he pretty much says that if you don't have that and if it's not good and you guys don't click then it's almost impossible to fix later on and it's almost doomed to failure. He gives he gives a couple examples of he gives a great example about how it, he gives a great example about how these two he gives a great example about how these two partners in a business just didn't work together and didn't click and it just fell apart. It just got destroyed. So I think that's very important. And he's not the only billionaire who has said something along those lines about partnerships and who runs the company and how important that is.
And then Hughes probably wanted my most and here's probably one of the most interesting points that I picked up from it, which was that a master, no, 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 a grandmaster salesman is so good at what he does that it doesn't look like selling. No one even feels like he's selling you something. And he says that the, and he says that the car salesman or the stereotypical type of salesperson that you see those are the bad ones because they make it so obvious they make it very clear that they're trying to sell you something and they're pushing and they're being very flashy about it he's saying that the best salesmen are very important he's saying that the best salesmen are so good that it's not even like selling they make it so seamless that the customer doesn't feel like they're being sold to at all it's just perfect and it, it, they go undetected they don't get noticed at all they're not known as salespeople that's how good they are so why is that important why is that one of my most interesting takeaways from the book well it's because I've heard from a lot of entrepreneurs and millionaires and billionaires that one of the biggest pieces of things that they did not all of them but one of the biggest learning lessons that they had was however many years they worked as a entry level salesperson. So I think there's some common tenet behind selling. I mean, I'll list you a couple billionaires who are like this and have said this exact thing. John Paul DeGiorio, Sarah Blakely, Mark Cuban. <coughs> So I think selling is very important. And again, I'm, you know, I used to be very, very against selling and salesperson and I didn't find that I was that type of person. I couldn't really go door to door and do that type of stuff. But the more and more I'm learning about it, the more and more I'm realizing that selling is helpful in a lot of ways. And as he mentioned, And selling is applicable to every area of your life. I think Peter Thiel mentions this in his book. And there's this other... And Grant Cardone in his book, 10X Rule, he's a salesperson by profession. He actually... He also says the same thing. But selling is applicable to every area of your life. Whether you are selling yourself whether you are selling your company, whether you are selling a product, whether you're selling your services for a job interview, whether you're selling yourself on a date. <laughs> so I think selling is very important. And I don't think you need to do anything manipulative or use any weird techniques to manipulate people uh, in actual, to be a good salesperson. There's this story in this book, it's called... There's a story in this book. The book's called The Seven Habits of the Highly Effective People. I know I'm getting a little off track, but hear me out here. So long story short, what happens is there's a bunch of these salespeople. They're master salespeople, apparently, or they say they are, and they have years of experience selling. And there's this one client that they've spent years trying to get to, to buy their product, and he was adamant. He would always refuse. And so they got this amateur novice salesperson and then they kind of tricked them just to mess with this guy. And he was like, and they told him, hey, we have this super easy client for you. You know, easiest sell ever. Let me guide you to him. So they set him up with the most difficult client who kept saying no. And lo and behold, he got the sale. Now, how did he do it? Well, he didn't approach it like a... So he got the sale and all these veteran salespeople were like, how did you do that? How did you do that? We were just messing with you. And this is what this novice salesperson said. Well, and this is what this novice salesperson did. 
He didn't come at it in some type of flashy salesperson way. He went in there and for the first hour, he didn't even announce who he was, what type of sales. He didn't announce anything about sales or selling or anything like that. He went into the room, observed what this man was doing, which was painting, and they talked for an hour on just painting and art. And then from there, you know, he just very casually said that he was there and so forth. And lo and behold, it worked out well. I think the lesson from that is just that sometimes selling is not about pushing this product in their face, doing everything you can. It's sometimes about, you know, helping the other person out and really just trying to and really just trying to be a good person and a nice person and a friendly person to that other person. I don't know if that's actually true. That's what I got out of it. Anyhow, back to this book. So the point is that I think that if you're a business person, if you're in a business, if you are an investor, I think this is worth the read. There are general business points and pieces of, of advice from a billionaire that you're getting for free. You know, you can't get close to this man in person and he's probably not going to be your business mentor. But with this book, you have some of the most timeless, priceless principles for free, just like available to you at the cost of three or five bucks, however much this book costs. You can get it used on Amazon for like five bucks. I'll probably leave a link in the description below. Is this book specific and catered to a general audience of anyone who is looking to make money? No, I'm going to be frank. No, it's, you know, a lot of it has to do with the tech sector, the tech industry. It talks about other industries as well, other semi-tech industries. And there's a lot of business knowledge and business history that is very useful to anyone in business. Now, some... <coughs> Now, now, as a caveat, a lot of this usefulness is a bit hidden, I believe. People might come out of this book and be like, well, okay, there's a few case studies, a, a bit of history, a bit of advice, a bit of information. That's not that useful. What's good about knowing how these businesses failed or how this business succeeded? <clears throat> it's very useful. Warren Buffett knows more about business history and businesses than anyone on earth or close to anyone on earth he has all this knowledge 50 years of knowledge and you know tons and tons of books he reads eight hours a day so when he's investing in a company or he's looking at his own companies he can tell he just has these gut reactions because he has all these reference points from all this history of business. And he can remember that company failed because it didn't take into account foreign cost competition. I'm not gonna let that happen this time. I'm not gonna invest in this company or I have to stay vigilant and prepare for that. So that's why it's important. So that's all I gotta say in a nutshell. I'll leave a link in the 